and extraordinary power. Human-made mountains, bodies falling to pieces. Millions of people buried alive. The story of the first Chinese emperor Qin Shi Huang. One of the most powerful and cruel rulers this history has ever seen. You may be seeing an ordinary mountain right now. It is a hill covered with trees and has no meaning when viewed from the outside, but this hill hides a deep secret under it. You can't imagine that the tomb of Qin Shi, who had a passion for immortality, was built four times larger than the largest Egyptian pyramid when it was built. The tomb was made in the form of a palace, and the ceiling was covered with stars. The rivers flowing from Mercury inside represented both the oceans and reflected the stars on the ceiling, creating a visual feast. In different rooms, the bones of dozens of concubines who were forced to die by drinking poison, along with their clothes and personal belongings, were uncovered. However, what makes the tomb so famous is none of what we count. Archaeologists discovered a room they never expected while continuing their excavation work. They saw that this room they had excavated was the largest part of the tomb complex and they encountered an unimaginable sight. More than 8,000 terracotta soldiers were just waiting in perfect order to continue Emperor King Shin's reign after his death. Given the terracotta army, the height and faces of these soldiers were designed to be different from each other, and archaeologists who continued to dig encountered other statues in other rooms. Horse-drawn carriages with drivers and harnesses, viziers, servants, even musical musicians and clowns who would entertain the Qin Shia in his eternal sleep were removed. There were musical instruments, horses, weapons, armor, items, each of which was again made of ash. About 8,000 have been unearthed and are still on display, but many more continue to be found under the ground every day. 700,000 soldiers and more than 500,000 civilians were employed in the construction of this structure, which is considered the largest tomb complex in the history of the world, but there is such a secret in the emperor's tomb that it is not easy for the human soul to handle it. The tomb was not made only with building materials, hundreds of thousands of Chinese who were forced to work tired out and died due to severe conditions and hunger and those who died were mixed into mortar and used as part of the tomb construction. But the very lucky ones were buried in mass graves by a terribly overwhelming force. So if Qin Shi's only grave is like this, what do you think his life is like? History 246 BC There is no unified Chinese state in the middle. Instead, the seven kingdoms are struggling to establish a government. One of these kingdoms, the Qin Dynasty, is headed by a boy who is only 13 years old, a boy who will not get out of trouble until he grows up. The first disaster had come through his mother. His mother had brought a man named Leo into the palace disguised as a eunuch and attempted a coup against the ambitious beloved Qin Shia. But Qin Shi had suppressed the coup by learning about it in advance. His mother's lover, the bear, he tied her to horses, severed her arms and legs alive, had everyone involved in the coup buried alive with their families in the ground, and locked her mother in a palace room that she could never leave again. Kinshi, who thought that he was taking over the authority by proving himself against his army and people, now had only one goal, to create a unified Chinese state by bringing the other six kingdoms under one roof. It was not enough to build an army. He quickly gathered more than a million young men from his people and formed the largest army that had existed in the ancient world to that day. He trained these people, who were ordinary peasants, and managed to turn them into professional troops. Yan province, which could not resist in the face of Qin Shi, realized that one day it would be defeated while the six kingdoms fell respectively, came with a peace offer. The kingdom sent an envoy to Qin Shia for the purpose of a positive diplomatic meeting. The messenger went up to the king's reception room with the map of the lands and the text of the agreement in his hand, opened the map and took out the poisoned dagger to stab Qin Shia. However, Qin Shi was a good soldier, and after getting rid of the dagger with his cloak, he killed the assassin there with his sword and gave his great command. Destroy the Yan Kingdom plunder their lands, 
kill all the managers. Execute his soldiers. No matter who is trying to escape. Again, the famous musician Keo Ziani, a close friend of the assassin these days, had sworn to avenge his friend and planned to kill his friend while showing off his art by infiltrating a music show at the palace. But a guardian of the person, he recognized Gao Jihanli and understood his plan. However, the emperor did not agree to the murder of such a talented musician, he had his eyes gouged out there and ordered him to continue the musical performance. Even the musician after the show he even congratulated me. At the end of more than a decade of invasions, the Kinshi state, which had taken all the other six kingdoms under its rule, gathered under one flag and established the unified Kin state, which we call China today in the name of this Kin. This is where the name of the state comes from. He had now managed to write his name into history as the first emperor of China, but gathering the lands under one flag was only the first step. It needed more to be a people, to be a single nation. For this reason, he reorganized the alphabet of varying meanings throughout the Chinese empire with words and letters that would have a single meaning and created a common Chinese alphabet. He developed a common calendar. He also made weight measurements, currencies and prices, even the width of horse-drawn carriages, linked to the standard so that common transportation could be provided on all Chinese roads. He also created a system of provinces and districts to prevent the reunification of other dynasties and to streamline the control of the country, dividing the country into 36 districts governed by governors and under them, making the empire he founded a real state. Although Kine was a cruel ruler, merit was his most important characteristic. He did not hesitate to invite scientists and viziers with merit, even if they were citizens of an enemy country, and to give the management of their projects, he changed the system of duties coming from noble families in the country and established a promotion system based on education and skills, that is, merit. Despite all his cruelty, he was a resourceful ruler, and he proved this, of course, it should not be forgotten about his support as a tremendously talented diplomat and philosopher and the emperor's prime minister. Consulting and intellectual fatherhood in many activities belonged to him, Lin Shi was a very interesting man. One day he saw that the mice in the toilet were thinner and hungrier, but the mice in the barn were full and ashen, and suddenly he realized this. Since everyone's life is different, there is no set standard for honor, people's values are determined by their social environment, and like mice, people's lives are completely dependent on random life events around them. Instead of always limiting morality to codes, it is more correct to ensure that people do the best according to their environmental situation. These ideas influenced Qin Shi and he served the empire as prime minister until his death emperor Qin Shi also carried out one of the largest architectural projects in Chinese history and managed to quintuple the agricultural yield in China by having it built. These enormous resulting agricultural lands, where more than a million workers work, are even today one of the most productive in China. However, the problems in the empire were still not over, so much so that a power from Central Asia was too harsh and brutal to be fought. They were Turks and Mongols Turkish and Mongol raids from Central Asia were causing great damage to the border areas, as they had been for hundreds of years these men were fast riders and good archers who came from the harsh climate of Asia. And it was not possible for Chinese soldiers to fight them. Those who came were the children of the steppe, so much so that while a group of raiders was looting in the north of the country, dozens of independent Turkish and Mongolian groups were looting and pillaging border towns in the middle of the south or in other regions, the old dynasties were trying to establish ties with the Turks through marriage, and preventing raids by giving various concessions. So much so that a pathetic poem from a Chinese princess reads as follows. My parents married me to someone from a far corner of the world and sent me to a wild country. The round tent, the walls of which are made of felt, is my palace. My only food is dried meat. Who are we if I'm going to drink? I'm constantly dreaming about my country, your heart is breaking.
I would like to be the yellow swan returning home. The wolves of Central Asia had left even the Kin Shia helpless, but he would consider a weak move such as making a concession or tying a marriage tie an insult to himself. He was planning another and more permanent solution. A giant wall that will surround the country from beginning to end as the largest man-made work in history that has ever been. A wall made with blood and forehead sweat. In other words, the Great Wall of China, the dynasties before it, made small-scale sets. But these were small walls that could be effective against each other. And a much bigger, much stronger one was needed. He had most of the old embankments demolished, and took millions of Chinese as laborers for forced labor. His motto was, build it and move on. There are 10,000 towers on the Great Wall of China, where more than 3 million people worked in its construction and a million people died in its construction, and these towers were used both for the accommodation of soldiers and for marking purposes. Every pennant raised by the soldiers in the tower meant that 500 enemies were approaching, and one was not just building an embankment. The Great Wall was also building new cities as outposts in the regions where it remained uninhabited. On the Great Wall more than one and a half million soldiers were serving at all times, the supply lines were carried out with tremendous engineering and organization. The people who started working with dawn in the morning and continued heavy construction until midnight were either dying or committing suicide due to hunger and extreme working conditions. Those who died were not wasted and were mixed into the mortar of the walls. It is also decorated with temples and palaces built in width and height where horse-drawn carriages will pass over important areas of the embankment. The purpose of the Seton was not only to protect against Turkish and Mongol raids. To show that the country has become a whole, to send the decriminalized rulers into exile, to punish them for hard labor and to prevent their escape from the country were among these goals. When an attack occurred, the captured enemies were burned and thrown down from the walls or thrown at the enemy with manacles to create psychological pressure. The 20 dynasties that came to power after him continued to make additions to the Great Wall of China until the 17th century. The person also had other problems. The teaching of Confucianism adopted by the Chinese people could cause questioning of the king's decrees and interpreted the monarch as a servant of the people. Instead, he decided to place legalism, that is, the philosophy of jurisprudence, which would allow him to establish a clearer authority. While both philosophies had pros and cons, legalism, which enabled more local governments, was a point of view that increased the power of centralized authority. Kinshi ordered that all books included in Confucianism should be burned. Those who delayed the law preventing this and those who kept the books should be exiled or buried alive. The greatest passion of the poetry of hatred was immortality, just like Alexander the Great and Genghis Khan, who would come after him, this was actually a common thought of all the great kings. I've achieved everything. I am as powerful as a god, and now I have to find immortality which is why sorcerers who claim to be a thousand years old have been bringing alchemists from all over the world who say they have found the elixir of life. Both willingly and forcibly, he expected them to prove their claims by first burying them alive in the ground. Reading information in alchemical books that ancient alchemists lived for thousands of years caused him to add mercury to the wines he drank and decayed his health. An alchemist told the Kingshi that if he lived unseen, he would be immortal by protecting himself from evil spirits, which led him to lead a secret life by installing underground passages between 200 palaces located in different cities. A man with 200 palaces and underground passages connecting them. When an inconceivable obsession reached the year 211 BC, a rumor began to spread. It was suggested that a thunderstone had fallen on an area in the lower reaches of the Yellow River, which was a prophecy that the emperor would die, and he sent a diplomat to investigate the situation. The Skyrock Fall was real, but it was necessary to destroy the prophecy. All the people living around the area where the incident took place were killed, 
and the pieces of the sky stone were collected one by one and crushed into dust. A year later, when he reached the age of 210 BC, he died in his palace as a result of the mercury he drank due to the fatigue caused by the struggle of leap years and alchemists. He was 49 years old when he died. And by creating a power like the Chinese state, he managed to change the entire world forever. He would be remembered as a ruler who performed two of the greatest architectural engineering seen in history and took the lives of almost 10 million people. There are also those who claim that what is said about them is based on myths, but today we know that most of them are true. He was Qin Shia. He was one of the most cruel but greatest rulers that history has ever seen, and now he is just lying in eternal sleep in the huge tomb he built. 2000 years later, he sleeps with people's amazed looks. You can subscribe to my channel and like the video for such videos to come.